Well, listen, it's great to be back after uh, back in front of you guys. Uh, exciting. Uh, we've got some great developments and updates to give everyone. And I know there's a lot of familiar faces and friends and folks that have known Nimble for a while around the room. And I know there's also a few folks who probably don't have all the background on us. So I think we've got a great agenda for you today. What I'm gonna do is start off in just a couple of minutes and just to make sure everyone understands kind of the nimble story at the highest level, I'm gonna kind of give everyone brief update on the company, where we are. I wanna make sure everybody's grounded on sort of what our products are, how we win, what kinds of things we're good at, just to make sure that everybody's got a good level set for what follows. And I'm gonna to try to be relatively brief about that. And then excited that we've got a really great uh, agenda for you to follow that. We're going to give you an overview of InfoSight. And those of you who have been following Nimble for a while know that has been a big part of our success and a big part of the foundation of the company literally since the very beginning days. And we've really found that InfoSight has been a game changer in the relationship with our customers. And really when we look out there at what's gone on the market, it feels like InfoSight is kind of setting the bar in many ways for what people think of as the support experience in the industry. And so we want to show you what's going on with that. And then a particularly a couple demos. One that's something that's called VM Vision that is one of the new features from earlier this year in InfoSight. Very powerful capability that's been extremely well received by our customers. It's an example where we're not just monitoring the performance of our storage and our systems, but extending our visibility out into the infrastructure around us. And so this is a case where we're able to help our customers troubleshoot and diagnose latency issues all the way out to the virtual machine level. So we'll show you what's up with that. Very cool stuff. And then we're going to take you uh, under the hood of InfoSight. Uh, I know that this group likes to understand the deeper technology and what's under the covers. And we're going to show you a little bit of how we got to InfoSight and some of the magic and how we're using InfoSight to really help solve problems and take things forward. And then we're going to talk about the Reliable Software Foundation, one of our lead architects, and it's going to take you through some of the core tenants that show sort of at the foundation of our file system, how we've taken some approaches to ensure absolute rock solid reliability. We all, I think, in our industry in Flash, we love to talk about performance and we love to talk about the, the sexy stuff that has made our industry move forward at such a rapid pace. But I think it's instructive to look back at if you don't have a rock solid foundation of reliability, uh, we would argue that nothing else that you build on top of that really matters. And we've done some innovative things at the bottom layers of our system that I think will be another great topic. And then Suresh, our CEO, is going to join us toward the tail end. And we thought it'd be nice to do kind of a fireside chat style opportunity for you guys to ask Suresh anything on your mind and just kind of engage back and forth. So that's how we thought we'd approach the next couple of hours. Okay. So with that, let me just jump back in and you know, context, you know, to Stephen's point, we've been fortunate to grow and enjoy a lot of success here at Nimble um, over a relatively short period of time. Since we launched the company, as we talked about a little bit over five years ago, you can see some of the progress markers that we've made, well over 6,000 customers. That's one of the statistics I think I'm most proud of. I think by our stretch, out of the dozens and dozens of kind of companies that have launched in our industry over the last five or so years, by most measures, we think we've got about as many customers as that group of all of them put together and combined. And I think it speaks to kind of the value of the products and the technology, but honestly about the whole team and the culture that we built at Nimble that hopefully those of you that don't know us well will get a sense for over the course of the day. It does take more than a better mousetrap. It does, it really does. And I think, you know, it's so exciting, you know, as I've had the chance to you know, talked to a bunch of customers recently at the VM world from a couple of months ago. And it's the way they interact with Nimble and our teams, whether it's our sales teams and our AEs and our support teams that have turned them into some of the biggest advocates for the company along the way. But of course, we've got some really cool technology that we built and some really neat things that we've done with it. And I'll try to take you through a couple of the high level steps just for a hey, quick. Hey, Dan, how many systems do you have in the field now? 
So it's 6,000 so customers, so. 6,000 customers. We don't publish the exact number of systems. I can say it's well into the, you know, you know, five figures in terms of number of systems that's out there in the field. We don't publish the exact numbers, but um, a sizable amount of our customers have multiple systems deployed because a big part of what makes us good is not just primary storage, but DR. And so there's a very high percentage of our customers that have transformed their data protection through replication. And we've got customers now that have literally dozens and dozens of systems at a single customer and kind of everything in between. I'll give you a couple more stats on that. But again, I'm, I'm gonna go quickly through some of this. I just wanna make sure that everybody's got a foundation. I know some of you are familiar with the beginnings of Nimble, but it's interesting, you know, when we talked, when we launched in those days back in Seattle, one of the claims that we made, and it was something that was greeted with a lot of skepticism was that, we thought that the multi-billion dollar product lines of storage in that day of, you know, from EMC, NetApp, and our, and our other good friends and respected companies would give way over the coming decade to a new set of flash-centric storage architectures. There was a lot of skepticism about that. And as we look at announcements from recent weeks, like the acquisition of EMC from Dell, that or I would have thought was April Fool's Day when I would see uh, announcements like that in the past, it's remarkable how a lot of the things that I think we thought about in those days have come to pass even quicker than we otherwise would have expected. And obviously, we all know flash is a huge part of the disruption. And for us, the early philosophy was to say, we wanted to leverage flash as an ingredient around a new storage architecture that could leverage the best of all these components. And a big part of our strategy was leverage the best of both flash and disk, but in a system that didn't make any fundamental assumptions about the ratio of flash to disk. And over time, our customers evolved to use much larger ratios of flash. The need to do much more performance and other things has really evolved in the market over the last several years, and we'll touch to some of that. And we'll talk about how InfoSight has been instrumental in giving us insights into the workloads of our customers and an understanding of what they're really doing out there. And we've got a really unique perspective from the thousands and thousands of systems deployed. And then Rod is going to talk about InfoSight. That was, again, the other really critical part of this, this insight that we had from the very beginning that said, the approach to storage in our industry we really thought was broken. Why should we wait for a customer to call us and tell us they have a problem and then manually and reactively try to solve it? And the observation we made was two new things had come along. It was possible with the internet, with all of our customers being connected, and with big data analytics, to start to rethink that whole process and proactively gather all this data all the time, put it in the cloud, and then with a team of data scientists, and you'll, you'll speak to one of our lead data scientists in a few minutes, really be able to start to proactively turn that around. And the result of that is over 90% of the support cases that we get today are automatically open from InfoSight, and less than 10% of them are actually our customers calling us. Much more to come on all of that. So just in terms of foundation, we are a SAN solution, just to make sure everybody's clear, right? So we have a set of fiber channel, iSCSI SANs. They're sold in a hardware architecture that provides high availability, very flexible range of scaling. I'll show you that set of products that we sell to a real wide range of enterprises. Everyone from mid-sized companies all the way up to some of the largest enterprises in the world today that run, on, run our systems. And to give you a little bit more of an insight into what's kind of guided some of our product roadmap and some of our thinking was this observation that we've made that as we all know today, customers tend to deploy multiple tiers of storage. And they've done that because applications have a very different set of requirements for performance, capacity, data protection, and the like. But the result of all these complex storage tiers is a set of big management challenges, right? These systems are optimized typically around different parameters. Do I want performance or do I want capacity? They've got different challenges around storage management, right? You've often got multiple generations of these technologies in your systems. Some of our larger competitors have received all those systems through a variety of different acquisitions. And so there's a ton of complexity around all this. Challenges around data protection and data mobility. So what we're gonna to talk to you about, and our real insight here was to develop something that we call an adaptive flash platform. And the idea with adaptive flash was to say, because we built a system that has a very flexible ability to deliver performance and capacity within a very complex envelope, we said, look, instead of thinking about having to deploy multiple tiers of storage to address these different needs, 
we could build a system that has the ability to support this huge range of workloads, all those coming from that require lots of capacity and a minimal amount of performance, up to analytics and databases that would typically require running on, say, all flash arrays today. And I'll touch on this in a moment, but a big part of what we innovated this year within our software was the ability to create multiple service levels within our system as software capabilities. So instead of having to deploy an all-flash array within Castle, our operating system, you can deploy now an all-flash service level that guarantees all of that I.O. will be served from flash, but at the touch of a button, you can move that back to a hybrid service level where it's going to get a blend of performance and capacity. And so instead of needing to support multiple silos with what we call adaptive flash, you can support all that within a single platform and within a single infrastructure. Okay. Dan? This sounds an awful lot like the argument the all flash guys make for just have one tier and have it be the really fast one. Yes. And we've reached the point where you're kind of obviously not offering an all flash solution. So a couple perspectives, Howard. I thought you would I thought you might take ten minutes to ask that question, but I think you're even a little bit faster. So the big step that we made was, look, our, and you know from talking to us for a long time, right, our vision has been, look, we want to really be able to solve this broadest set of problems across the entire data center. And if you look at the evolution of our products from five years ago where we were accelerating kind of mainstream applications with this approach that said in about a third or a fifth of the hardware of what our competitive hybrid solutions, who in those days were guys that had bolted flash into a disk based system, we could perform two, three, four, five times faster, actually give our customers better capacity and do it all with a very small amount of flash. What's changed since then is we've now got systems, and I'll skip ahead to give you guys a perspective. Well, one, one of the things that's changed since then is the relative cost of flash to disk has narrowed. Absolutely. And, and the perceived affordability of flash has increased even faster than that's narrowed. That's right, and that's a big part of why part of what we did is say, we need to be able to take our products up into a space where we can compete head to head in environments where our customers have workloads that want that all flash experience. And so one of the things we introduced last year was systems that could go up to 125,000 IOPS, and when you cluster those together, half a million IOPS, do it with well over 100 terabytes of flash within that system and use that so that we could expand our breadth to where now we compete and win against all flash arrays in an increasing amount of the competitive landscape that we face. Although the majority of what we yeah, see yeah, out there is still... You, you can't deny that, that there's a customer base who wants an all flash array whether they need it or not. No question, so I'm getting to that point. Okay. And so the, there is an opportunity. Look, what we've been doing across the board is continuing to build our portfolio out. And if you look at what we've done, we've increasingly said, we're going to deliver a new group of service levels that allow our customers to get that performance and capacity that they need. I would say we have opportunities, we think, to continue to build on that innovation and continue to build on what we've done within Castle to be able to continue to further increase that performance envelope at the top end. We're not going to be able to talk about the details of roadmap and other things that we haven't disclosed. Oh, but I think so it's safe to say our vision is a very broad one in this space, and the foundation of the technology that we built <coughs> allows us, we think, to continue to expand the scope of what we're going after. Have you considered a career in politics? <laughs> <laughs> so, Dan, on this, uh, you said on the all-flash shelf, expand cache up to 32 terabytes. You're talking about flash cache. Is that what that is? Not a DRAM cache, right? That is in flash. That's yeah. right. Yeah, 32, 32 I think we even go to 40 <laughs> terabytes really up on this system. So when you, the way to think of what we're doing within that system and within these all-flash shelves is you can take groups of workloads and pin those within flash, give them that all-flash service level, but on the same system, you can now run a petabyte plus of disk so that I can consolidate all these workloads across all these different opportunities within the same system and do that seamlessly across a portfolio that goes up and down the spectrum from very affordable systems all the way up to very high-end systems that some of our largest enterprises are running. And, and the service levels you really support are disk only, hybrid, and flash only? Is that kind of the... That's essentially the way you can think about it, that's right. There's a number of parameters in there we can tune with a couple of different tweaks on the caching modes. What we've done is improve our caching over a period of time too, so we're doing some sophisticated things to do access-based eviction so that we're really tracking a lot of the workload really well. 
But remember, a big part of what's unique about us is it's not just that we've got a flash cash. Core to what we do and that's tied to our value proposition is the underlying Castle data layout that we built that optimizes rights. So what Castle's doing, and I'll try to do it justice in 30 seconds or, left, or less, although it's hard, is to say we take incoming I.O. and transform random I.O. that is very poorly handled by spinning disk, as this room knows well, and we transform it using this data layout into fully sequential I.O. Log structured file kind of thing. A log structured file system, exactly right. So that those, in that CS700 that's 125,000 IOPS, we're writing directly to 12 7200 RPM drives that are normally good for 60 or 80 IOPS each. But because we turn all that random into fully sequential I.O., you can drive 125,000 IOPS. It, the, the cool thing about that is all those CPUs that we're using to do that write serialization make those slow hard drives perform faster than SSDs in a lot of all flash arrays. And then we use flash where it's really good as a read cache to accelerate those reads with the flexibility to be very dynamic about what data is served out of flash and what data is going back to disk. And for data protection, we think this is another really fundamental advantage. Remember, even in workloads that want an all-flash experience, most of our customers are keeping snapshots for days, if not weeks or months around. And with this architecture, all those snapshots can automatically go to that very dense, cheap disk layer with six terabyte drives, where it really makes fundamentally no sense to store that data within a flash layer. So that flexibility has given us a really big advantage in both performance and capacity for those customers. All right, I'm going to move very quickly because I want to get to some of the new cool stuff that's here. This is just a quick snapshot of the innovation across the, the, the most recent set of Nimble OS releases that we've made. I'll just call out a couple that are cool here. We introduced smart secure encryption earlier this year. It's software-based encryption, so unlike some approaches that encrypt at the drive layer, we're actually doing it at the software layer, and we can actually replicate that data encrypted end-to-end. -end. You're going to get a demo of the VM view per VM monitoring and the multiple service levels that I described that give you that disk or that hybrid or that all flash service level. The last thing I want to mention in my minute or two is just to say a couple words about something that we've made a, another major investment in, we've doubled down on, and it's what we call our smart stack. This is a converged infrastructure solution where we partner with a dozen plus significant companies, and Cisco is a very substantial partner of ours here where we offer a set of integrated solutions and reference architectures that allow us to essentially give our customers a blueprint for how to deploy applications on that. And that has become a really important part of our business and growth. This business is growing over twice as fast as our overall business, which is growing leaps and bounds ahead of what's going on within the overall industry. And it's an area where just over the last several quarters, we've added new smart stacks with SAP, with Oracle, uh, with a number of other of these vendors, and we're going to continue to build on this momentum here. So a really important part of our go-to-market and a really important part of how we've done business. And I'll close with one other thing that's you know, kind of hot off the presses that we're really proud of. Gartner just released, as you may have seen, their most recent Download Magic Quadrant. Already. Congratulations. And You're a leader. And we were, you know, given the influence and given you know, the respect that Gartner's garnered in the industry, being named as a leader, in a magic quadrant that represents the majority of spend within the storage industry, over $20 billion plus dollars. And it's a quadrant where the second youngest company that's a leader is NetApp. So, you know, we look at NetApp as a company that, you know, kind of was the last company to really build a, a truly great independent storage company. We know they've had their challenges recently, but we have a lot of respect for what NetApp's been able to build in the last couple decades. And we're the only other company, really, that isn't multiple decades old it's in there. So we're proud of that and we think that's a re reflection of what we've been able to do in the market up to this point.